Miami and Diddy have been romantically linked since 2021. The couple confirmed their relationship in June on the City Girls Rappers podcast series, Carisha Please. Diddy said of their relationship at the time that they go on dates and that they're friends. He said they go to exotic locations and they have great times. I'm single, you know, I'm single, but I'm dating. I'm just taking my time with life. All right. Mm -hmm. So what we is? We date. We dating. We go have dates. We friends. Okay. We go to exotic locations. <laughs> we have great times. Mm. We go to strip clubs, church. Miami echoed a similar sentiment in an interview with XXL a few months later. She explained that they have the freedom to see other people and that it might be confusing to those who aren't familiar with the idea of an open relationship. People don't know what dating means. He's single, I'm single, but we're dating. That's what I mean when I say we go together. When we're together, we're together. We're having the time of our lives, but we're still single, she explained. Young Miami showed the ultimate support for Diddy when he received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2022 BT Awards. During his acceptance speech, the camera panned on Miami, who was smiling ear to ear holding a Go Poppy sign. A few days later, the couple was met with backlash online after fans pointed out that Diddy thanked some of his exes rather than his current love interest. It didn't take long before the Bad Boys founder hopped on Instagram to thank her. This is one of the sweetest things anyone's ever done for me, Diddy wrote alongside a photo of young Miami holding up the sign. Thank you, shoddy wop. One user criticized Diddy for thanking every woman in his life during his speech, with the exception of Miami. Girl, please, Miami simply replied. Even her city girl's bandmate JT had something to say about the response. Bitch don't play crazy, not a bitch that can be seen touched and identified trying to viral. Okay, all right, she wrote. In 2022, there were reports that young Miami and Diddy split after the latter, cut her allowance to just $200,000 a month. At the time, both Miami and Diddy removed photos of each other from their Instagram accounts. Within a few days, however, Miami posted photos of herself in a room filled with red roses. She panned the camera to a note that read, Love Poppy. Fans assumed that the two worked out their alleged differences with this post. Following news of Diddy's latest family edition, Academics posted a YouTube video in which he called Young Miami a side chick. Young Miami is like Diddy's side chick, the media personality said. Like one of them, he got like about eight, nine. Okay, maybe I shouldn't call her a side chick because everybody like, how can she be a side if she the main? She's on the roster. Young Miami tweeted in response, I'm nobody's side bitch, let's just make this clear on this good Monday. I don't come second to no bitch. She continued, Diddy won't even look half of y'all B-way. One day after Young Miami took to Twitter to respond to academic side chick accusations, Diddy issued a statement. The Bad Boys founder explained that Young Miami is not his side chick and that he doesn't play about his shoddy wop. In another tweet, the father of seven said, think what you want. On December 13th, 2022, Diddy's ex-girlfriend Gina Huin decided to add fuel to the fire after learning that her ex-boyfriend welcomed another child. Huin trolled Young Miami, who she went back and forth with online months before then after she was spotted with Diddy. Her video on Instagram was captioned, when she beefing with you over a ninja emoji, but whole time he got somebody else pregnant. After catching wind of the shade, both JT and Miami fired back. JT even alleged that Diddy made Huyen have an abortion. In a series of tweets, Miami didn't hold back her tongue either. Huyen, on the other hand, appeared to be unbothered. Carisha, you know you wanna taste this yum yum sauce, Huyen wrote over a photo of her sticking her tongue out. Miami responded, if I wanted you to eat my pee diddy would have had you on your knees, ho, you a eater, she continued, be you a munch. Miami has been on the roll with her man ever since they got together, and the man has been rolling along with her, setting up her podcast and buying her expensive jewelry. Taking her along to the Met Gala 2022, huge allowances and all kinds of baby girl treatments. Well, all that is about to come to a halt. Less than a week after settling a lawsuit with former bad boy artist Cassie, which accused him of rape, Sean Diddy Combs is facing more sexual assault allegations. In a complaint filed in New York Supreme Court and obtained by our sources, Joy Dickerson Neal alleged that Combs drugged, sexually assaulted, and abused her, and that she was the victim of revenge porn created and distributed by the rapper. The suit, which also names Combs Company's Bad Boy Entertainment and in Combs Enterprises as defendants, was filed under the Adult Survivors Act, which allowed alleged victims of sexual abuse a one-year period to file civil suits for offenses beyond the typical statute of limitations. 
Thursday marked the final day to file a complaint under the act. According to the complaint, Dickerson, Neal, and Combs met while she was a student at Syracuse University in 1991, and she agreed to attend a dinner with him after appearing in one of his music videos. The suit then alleges that Combs intentionally drugged Dickerson Neal during the dinner, sexually assaulted her, recorded it on video, and shared the tape with others. Dickerson Neal is suing Combs for substantial and lifetime injuries that she says resulted from the alleged assault, including severe depression and suicide ideation. Dickerson Neal is demanding a trial by jury and compensation for alleged mental and emotional injury, distress, pain and suffering and injury to her reputation, according to the complaint. An additional lawsuit was also filed against Combs by a Jane Doe, who alleges that the hip-hop mogul and R&B singer Aaron Hall took turns raping her and her friends at Hall's apartment sometime between 1990 and 1991. A representative for Combs blasted the lawsuit as fabricated claims. In the wake of these three lawsuits alleging sexual assault, Diddy has temporarily stepped aside as chairman of Revolt, the music-oriented television network he co-founded in 2013. A statement posted to Revolt's Instagram page reads, in part, Sean Combs has stepped down from his position as chairman of Revolt. While Mr. Combs has previously had no operational or day-to-day -day role in the business, this decision helps to ensure that Revolt remains steadfastly focused on our mission to create meaningful content for the culture and amplify the voices of all Black people throughout this country and the African diaspora. Combs started Revolt in 2013 with Andy Schoen and formed a distribution pact with Comcast Corporation. CEO Dottavio Samuels told Variety last year that Revolt's mission is to shift the narrative for Black people globally, and the way to do that is to build the world's largest, most powerful Black storytelling platform, powered by creatives. The network is behind shows including Love and Respect with Killer Mike, Revolt Black News, and Sneakin' In with Drusky. Diddy's partnership with Capital Preparatory Schools has also come to an end amid the ongoing sexual assault allegations that he's been hit with. Dr. Steve Perry, the founder and head of schools for Capital Preparatory, released a statement regarding the severed partnership between the company and Diddy. According to the statement, the decision was made after a thorough evaluation that wasn't taken lightly. Following a comprehensive evaluation, a decision has been made to end the partnership between Capital Preparatory Schools and Sean Combs, Dr. Perry wrote in a statement shared on the school's official website. While this decision was not made lightly, we firmly believe it is in the best interest of our organization's health and future. Diddy helped launch the charter school's Harlem location back in 2016 and donated $1 million in 2021 for its Bronx location. The school decided to sever ties with the Bad Boy Records founder shortly after he announced he would be temporarily stepping down as the chairman of Revolt. Online, Young Miami doesn't seem too phased by her boo's latest chaos. She's been pretty much silent on social media, but when Cassie filed the lawsuit, she posted a video of a family outing to the Dolphins game with her kids to her Instagram story. A source close to her has however confirmed that the reverse is the case. The source stated how young Miami is at the verge of losing everything she has been enjoying by being Diddy's sugar baby. I mean, granted, she's a singer, she has a podcast and maybe other businesses, but none of that gives her enough money to live the lavish lifestyle that she does. She owes it all to Diddy, and now everything is about to come down crashing. Even a podcaster who once worked with Revolt TV refused to renew her contract because of the allegations popping up everywhere against Diddy. She said, FYI, I won't be signing on to do the third season of Revolta's Monuments to Me podcast. I am an essay survivor and I cannot be a part of a show that's supposed to uplift black women while Diddy leads the company. Believe black women. Well, people are connecting the dots and putting all the pieces together. All I know is, we haven't seen the end of all these. But now guys, I wanna know what you think. Share your thoughts because at this point, there is bound to be more drama. How do you think Miami is going to react to all these? Do you think she will detach herself from Diddy soon? Do you think they are going to stick together through it all? Let me know in the comments. Check out this next video.